Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Welcome to the Muslim Hube If you are new here, you make sure you subscribe and press on the notification bell So whenever there are new videos released, inshallah you shall be notified Here we learn about Islam and so many things So if you are interested, let's dive in Today we shall be discussing about the Islamic concept of God That is Tawheed And also the Christian triune God that is the three in one God and why is one so simple to understand and one so very complex you see Tawheed is the heart of Islam it teaches about the oneness of God like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran the whole chapter talks about Tawheed it says Allah ahad say Allah is one and only Allah is Samad Allah the eternal refuge lam yalid wa lam yulad Allah does not beget, neither is he begotten. And there is nothing comparable to him. That is the simple Islamic concept of God. This is straightforward. One God. Every Muslim understands that. And everybody in the world today also understands that. That is why Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world today. Because it makes much sense. Now let's look at the Trinity also. The Trinity is the core belief in Christianity. It teaches that the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit are one. Meaning there are three deities but one in purpose. Let's see. This is a concept that has been debated for so many centuries. How can God be one and at the same time three? Does that make sense? This question that I have just posed now, even theologians find it difficult to answer. They have battled it for so many centuries and till modern day. The contrast is clear. Tawheed is a simple and ambiguous concept. One God, one truth. The Trinity on the other hand is layered with complexities. That often lead to confusion. Even among Christians, different interpretations exist. At the end of the day, simplicity speaks to the human heart. Tawheed offers clarity and certainty, while the Trinity remains a mystery in Christendom. But with all this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ikhlas, and also the Christian belief about the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited it in the Quran. He says, Wala taqulu thalatha, Do not say Trinity. Let me ask you, as a Muslim, would you be happy to see your brother and sisters in a place that you will not want to be? Because Allah says in Surah Al-Bayyina, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ Those who disbelieve among the people of the book, وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا And the mushriks, meaning the idolaters, they will be in the hellfire. Would you be happy to see your brother do that? So why don't you propagate Islam to them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that is Quran chapter 2, verse number 111. There were some Jews and Christians who came to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, claiming that they want to test him to see whether he is really a prophet of God. Now they test the Prophet, peace be upon him, and they are asking, what is your concept of God? But let's leave that one aside. It says, وَقَالُوا لَنْ يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةَ إِلَّا مَنْ كَانَ هُودًا أَوْ نَصَارَ that will never attain paradise until you become Jews or Christians. Now Allah says, Tilka amani yuhum, that this is their wishful, vainful thinking. Whenever they come with such claims, ask them, Hayatu burhanakum, produce your evidence in kuntum sadiqeen, if indeed you are truthful. With the expansion of this verse, one Muslim scholar, Sheikh Ahmad Didat, expanded on this verse because Allah says, Qul hayatu burhanakum. So, what is the proof? of these Christians and Jews. Their proof is the Bible. Sheikh Ahmad Dida used the Bible and he clarifies so many things which makes Dawah now easy for everybody. Come on, pick up yourself. Do something to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.